Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. Gale, aka Sideshow Bob. And what I'm going to do today, hopefully, is make a movie about how to what about film for drum scanning. Uh, I'll give you a little background. I am not a commercial lab. I just do this for my own work. I've been doing our shows for about 30 years now. And uh, when I made the transition from the wet dark room to the digital dark room, I decided I want to have good quality scan or images to work with. So I got into drum scanning. Uh, a lot of people are very much afraid of drum scanning because of the wet mounting process. So hopefully after you see this video, it'll make a little bit more sense to you and hopefully make it a little bit easier for you. Anyway, uh, bear with me. I've never made a video before, so this is kind of new. Uh, let me make some disclaimers first. Like I said, I do this on my own. I pretty much learned how to do it on my own, although I've, I've picked up some hints on along the way, of course, which has helped. and. There again, maybe this will help somebody out there also. Uh, some people may watch this that have been drum scanning for a long time and say, that's not the way to wet mount film. Well, that's okay. I, hey, they got a better way of doing it. Make a video and maybe I'll learn to switch my ways. But anyway, in the meantime, this is how I do it. May not be how you do it, but maybe you'll pick up some hints that'll make what you are doing a little bit easier for you. Anyway. Before I begin, let me show you a few things that I need, or I use anyway, for, for scanning. Uh, I'm, I'm familiar with two kind of scan, two types of scanners. One's the Howtech 4500, and the other is the ScanMate 5000. I no longer have the Howtech, I've, just, I've decided to stick with the ScanMates that are doing the job that I want to have done, and for other various reasons. Anyway, the way you mount for the Howtech versus the ScanMate are different in some respects. Uh, and when I get to the points where I can remember the difference, I'll be sure to point them out to you. Uh, generally speaking, the way you add mount should work for just about any kind of drum scanner. There are just certain things about some scan scanners you have to keep in mind. Anyway, to get started. Uh, my software, I like to have a nice square image when I get it, when I scan it. Otherwise, when I do a previous scan in the software, I can draw a crop around the uh, piece of film and it is not showing whites and it's not showing a lot of black. Uh, that has a tendency to screw up my software as far as uh, setting a color balance, etc. Anyway, so what I do is I always mount so that my film is very square to the drum. And the way I accomplish that is I use a light box. And what I've done on the light box, I've made a a grid pattern out of Photoshop and then I just print it on uh, my laser printer and it comes out on the on Mylar. This is the same Mylar that I used for, um, for mounting the film. Anyway, let me just make a little bit easier to see if I put it quite behind it. That I have attached to my light box and there again I can square up real well. Okay, I'm gonna be kind of jumpy in and out because I'm also the photographer. I'm also the camera operator as well as a demonstrator. So it's gonna take. It's gonna be a little bit. So if I break and then come back and then break and come back, you understand why I make some adjustments. I'm also trying to keep my head straight. Okay, what else is here in my notes? I've gotta get my eyes. You get my age. You can't see. So okay, tools. Uh, I talked about the grid. So why I want to use the grid? And that's just get the film straight. So then when I do scan it. It comes out nice straight. Besides that, you don't have to do any rotating and Photoshop, hopefully. Uh, other things I use is tape. Uh, you can use Tessa tape, which is an inexpensive tape. Works fine. It's just not very good with the fluids. Uh, until you get used to it, you're probably better off with the tape that resists the mounting fluids. And the, a good one is the 3M 850 tape. Uh, it's expensive, but the stuff lasts a long time. Anyway, you can find that on the web. Uh, Tessa tape. You can buy that just about anywhere. Uh, other things. Uh, fluids. All right. Uh, I'm using Prezio drum mounting fluids and cleaners. Unfortunately, like most drum uh, scanner suppliers, they're no longer in business. Uh, they were out of Canada. They still, I think, they still sell a cleaner, but you can't get the oil anymore. But I've 
I've got enough probably last for the rest of my scanning career. Anyway, there's uh, there's a couple outfits. Uh, Aztec down in Southern California carries an awful lot of supplies. You can sort of get, they, and they they seem to be viable and look like they're going to stay in business for a while. So you can get your mylar and things like that from them. Uh, there's a place called Scan Magic. Uh, I think they're back east someplace, and they make a mounting fluid that I I've, I've not used it, but I understand it's it's a good fluid to be using. Okay. Anyway, anything else I forgot? Uh, I don't think so. So let me go ahead and shuffle things around a little bit and we'll go ahead and start mounting. Okay, I'm back. This is a little awkward, but uh, we'll deal with it. Anyway, in the last, I just reviewed the last section I recorded and I said Scan Magic. I don't even know what that place is. It's Scan Science www.scanscience.com and they have mounting fluid. I haven't tried it, but the reports I've heard, it sounds like it's a pretty good thing. Anyway, as you can see now, I hope, uh, I got the grid that's attached to my light box and I'm ready to start mount. Before I mount anything, I want to talk about dust. Dust is a pain. All right, so first thing I do is I use this Novus plastic cleaner and I clean this thing. Nice thing about it is anti-static and it'll remove uh, the, a lot of the dust and it'll keep the dust from being attracted to, this, to the plastic. Okay, got that done. Grab a scanner wipe, buff it up, and I should be ready to go. Now Mylar comes in different sizes. This, uh, because of my drums, I have to to trim it to about eight and a half inches in size. So there's a piece of mylar. And I'm sure you can't see it in the video, but I've got some, I've got some marks here on my uh, grid where I line up the edge of the uh, mylar with them. Okay, there again it's square both ways with the grid pattern. And I take a piece of tape and put it right across the top of the uh, mylar, between the mylar, attach it right to the light box so it doesn't move around. Okay, now we're ready to go. Just checking, yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, I shoot 4x5 film, so I'm going to be mounting four pieces of 4x5 film on this sheet. Okay, so let's grab the first one. I believe I decided I wanted to do this one. Okay, uh, there again, dust. I'll blow it off. I, I normally wouldn't blow right here where my mylar is because that's kind of defeating the purpose. And I'd be blowing the dust off of this or my skin right back onto the mylar. Anyway, there we go. First piece of film. Now, with the, with, with the ScanMate scanner, this is how the image is supposed to lay it in relation to the drum. The drum has a solid end. Here's the drum. And it has this line. This is where the scan, where the uh, image actually starts. So this is a break when you do the, the scan. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so I have to turn it this way because it got the way it goes in the drum mounting and flip it around. But anyway, this is the way the film works out. You'll have to look at your own scanner and see how this, how you have to arrange it so the film doesn't either come up upside down or is top to bottom. I know mine is going to go this way. So there again, I have to come in a little bit, drop down a little bit, line it up with, with a grid pattern. Now what I use, which I hadn't talked about yet, is there again, I don't know if you can see this or not, but what I've done is i put some strips of tape on this piece of glass and I've cut and made little squares. The reason for that is once I get the film where I want it, I take an X-Acto knife, I you know, didn't manage to do a very good job on that one, let's try another one. This is hard. 
Got a little piece of tape on the end of my exact knife. There again, this lined up where I want it. Piece of tape in the corner, tack with the mylar. Repeat the process. Piece of tape. Make sure it's still square. Tack down the corner. Okay, another piece of film. And I think I decided I was going to do this one here. Again, get oriented the way it has to go on. Oh, by the way, the emulsion goes towards the drum motion towards the drum. I saw there was some confusion on the web the other day about which way that film should be mounted. Again, grab a little piece of tape. Stick it down. One more. Now I didn't clean that piece of tape or film, I should have, before I put it, stuck it down, but oh well, I have a hard time walking and chewing bubble gum, so bear with me. Okay, so that's two pieces of film mounted to the mylar, taped down, aren't going anywhere. Now rather than bore you and have you watch me do the other two, I'll go ahead and take a break, finish up, finish these up, then we can talk about the next step. Okay, film is, I got all four pieces of film mounted now, as you can see, and also I forgot to mention, just tack the top corners so that the film floats on the, on the mylar, that way when we mount it to the drum, it'll go around the drum without distorting the film itself. Okay, and another thing, dust, don't forget about dust. Yeah, that works great. Brushes work great. There's other devices. Work great. Okay, the next thing I do, there again, using the Novus plastic cleaner. Get this guy going. Clean it up. Buff it. There's any any static there's there's any static electricity on that plastic that'll cut it. There we go on the drum itself, do the same thing if you want. I always like to use a little bit of drum cleaner on it, or the Novus plastic cleaner. Make it sure it's nice and shiny. If you have to clean inside, whatever. They make special little wands. I've got one right here someplace that you can also clean the inside with. Anyway, you want to make sure that you've got the dust all off on the outside, the inside. The outside is more important. If you get dust the inside, they'll be out of focus, but they still kind of be, if they're big, they can be a pain. All right, my drum scanner mounts like this, and this red line is where I want to line up my mylar to get started. Take my film, lay it down. Now, I have to stay inside this red line when the film has to. Otherwise, it, if anything over here, off to, farther off to my right uh, will not get scanned. I don't think it matters on the other side because I never tried to scan over there because I need some room over there to tape anyway. So anyway, that looks pretty good. What I do is take a small piece of tape. Easier said than done. And I don't like that piece too disturbed. Nothing else to cooperate today. Make sure it's square. Tack it down. I try to work out the air bubbles. And now I'm going to take a long piece of so it's going to go all the way across. 
like such. There again. Mush it down so it's no air bubbles in there, otherwise it'll the fluid will get underneath there and it'll want to lift the tape up and then it'll cause you problems. I made this a little bit long. Uh, right now I'm not gonna worry about it, I'm just gonna fold it under, no big deal. Okay. Now the film's attached to the top. Now it's the time to actually start doing the wet body itself. Drop the arm on the the uh, mounting station. Bring it up to here. And what I do? Put the film over. Huff and puff. Can't do too much of this, that's for sure. Top and bottom. Now. This has got my mounting fluid in it. It's, it's actually a naphtha material. It's not really an oil. They call it oil mounting, but it's not really an, it's oilish, but it's not really an oil. To be stingy with it. Squirt both sides. Now it's just rolled down like such. Get to this end. Get this guy up again. more air. Both sides. Good. Top. Bottom. Keep rolling. Okay. Now, when I get to this end, I want to start tacking that tape, the piece of the edge of the miler, to the drum itself. To do that, take some drum cleaner. Make sure I squish this down a little bit, a little bit of drum clear, make sure that fluid, there again, the tape doesn't want to stick if it's got fluid down, so you have to get that tape loose. I'm oh, sorry, the, the, uh, mounting fluid away from the tape, where you're going to put the tape. Okay, now this is my way of doing it. I take a piece of tape, it's maybe about an inch long, okay, I grab it in the middle, just kind of tack it there. Of course you don't make it too long because you don't want it to overlap on the top of the images that, 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 that are right below this area. Okay, grab it. I lift up the arm at this point. And this is where you, you really want to just really pull. I pull to the point where it distorts the tape. Okay? Because you want to get that film and the, and the mylar flat. Uh, when you scan, there's a very shallow depth of field, so if it's not flat, you'll have some, certain edges of the, of the uh, uh, transparent, so you will not be in focus. So, okay, so I've got one section down, one piece of tape on. Here again, I have another. We'll roll hard and take it down. That was almost too long, but it's okay. And I just work from the inside out with little short pieces of tape. You can overlap them if you want. Okay. Let me go ahead and pause the film for a moment. I'll go ahead and finish this up, otherwise, I'm going to run out of time. Okay, I'm back. What I've done is I've gone. I can't see it, but I'll try. Made a little short pieces of tape all the way across. I just started the center and worked my way out, going one side to the other until I got all the way across. That makes the mylar nice and flat. Pull the film as close as you can to the drum. After I finish that, I put a piece of tape across here to kind of seal that edge. And I also put a piece of tape all the way around this end where the metal hub is. Now, this is one of the difference between the Scanmate drums and the Howtech drums. The Howtechs have an area on the drum that you can't put any tape or the end, so you have to kind of tape, you can't go all the way around, you have to tape within those those boundaries. There's marks on the drum, and I think you're pretty well aware of if you have a Haltech uh, where you can't go. Matter of fact, uh, 
you want to make you know, on the Haltec drums that there's a little, little area in there they, they use that for calibration every time the drum goes on they use that area for calibrating it and you want to make sure there's no dust or anything on that thing otherwise it'll leave streaks on your film scan it doesn't care it, it calibrates all you do all the calibration before you start the scan okay it's I've got one end of it sealed and this end is not sealed what I'm going to do is I there you, probably, there again you can't see them but there's a whole a bunch of little air bubbles this is the thing that it, seems to drive most people crazy is getting these little air bubbles out. It's really not that big a deal. I first start off with a, in the drum money station, a scanner wipe, and just start working them out. Squish them out. Okay. And it's going pretty good. And the tighter you get the mylar, the easier this is. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing right now because otherwise this will drive this video out. So take it out of the drum money station. that out of the way. Now what I do, of course I forgot to get it over here. I got an empty piece of masking tape and because of this drum has a thing on the end of it, I can I sit on top of the masking tape one end up. Now taking my mounting fluid again, I can using cap because of capillary uh, fluid motion, is I can run the fluid down on the edge of the drum and then you look, because it it'll go into the mylar and start feeling like still, you can see the bubble starting to come up. Okay, once I have the fluid in there, there again, and I just start working those bubbles up. Air likes to go up. It's not too hard, just kind of work it all the way around the drum. Actually, this is going pretty good. I'm really happy with this one. A lot of times, it's depending on who processes the film, you'll end up these crimps in the corner like this has got one down here where it's kind of bad. You get a pocket of air around it. There's not a heck of a lot you can do about that. I've seen people take screwdriver, or not screwdrivers, but uh, pliers, file out the end of it, make it flat, and then they actually just press on those corners to get them flat. Or you can cut them off. I've cut them I usually just cut them off. If they're bad, step them off, yeah. Lose a little bit of film, but no big deal. Okay, not bad. I got most of the bubbles out. Anyway, keep time short. Right, I'm not going to continue. What I do now is I'll put it back in the drum mounting station, and I'll tape the other end. Okay, all done. Here's the package. Everything's mounted nice and tight. There's not any, I got all the bubbles worked out. It's sealed all the way around so the fluid will stay where it's supposed to stay. Uh, these things spin about 1600 RPM so you want to make darn sure that it doesn't come loose at that speed or you'll destroy your film. Anyway, the last thing I do, there again, a little bit of the Novus. Squirt it down, put a little bit on, kind of polish up that outside of the Mylar. Scanner wipe, buff it up real good. That'll, that should knock any dust on the outside off, hopefully. Okay, ready to go. Now, before I end this video, I want to talk about one thing. That is the drums themselves. They don't make these anymore, at least I'm not aware of. And if you aren't careful with them, you can screw them up. Uh, so you have to be careful the kind of fluids you use, etc. Here's an example of a drum. I don't know what was used on it, but obviously it is worthless. It's uh, that's they call this crazing. Uh, there's some, something happens to the plastic it, the material of the drum itself. It causes all these little spider cracks in them. Anyway, uh, it's, a, it's a good example of what not to do to your drum. Uh, anyway, so take care of your drums. Uh, be careful around them. I should not be wearing my watch around this because I'm a chance of banging it, what have you. Anyway, I uh, hope you learned something from this. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, uh, let me know and I'll try to get back to you. Anyway, thanks for watching and later.